Uh oh. You hear me? I can hear you. What's up? All right, let's get this going. Hello, everyone. Welcome to episode one of Yellow Flags, a podcast talking about everything referees. I'm your host, Timmy. Today, we're going to go talking uh, about how to ruin a game and taking over the spotlight. But I'm not alone. I'm joined by my co-host, Adam Snow. Adam, before I ask you how you're doing, um, Davis, Carlton Davis, stop grabbing DK Metcalf. That's it. Adam, I'll be right back. One sec. There's so much to unpack here, folks. Um, first off, I know this is going to be the way we we're going to reveal that Kyle works at a Foot Locker. Two, uh, boy, he could really uh, use some uh, practice on his form when throwing a flag. That was just awful. That that flag ain't going nowhere. And uh, I'm really sorry we had to start the show like this. This was not my idea. Oh, hey, Adam, how you doing? Hi, Kyle. Uh, you missed the whole introduction there. There was a referee from Foot Locker and everything. Everything's in a shamble here. I guess. Man. You just letting anybody into your house now? Apparently. Shoot. <laughs> All right. Well, I guess let's just get into it. Hey, how about those Tigers, I... huh? Hey, you know, yeah, we're recording this right after the Tigers won game two of the AL wild card round. I got my Tigers jersey. Hey, and by the way, it does say my last name on it. So, uh, oh wow, yeah, I, I, I am not a big baseball fan. I'm gonna admit that right off the bat. But when it comes to playoff baseball, I mean, I'm always rooting for the Tigers. I mean, root for all the Michigan teams. But it's pretty cool to have the Tigers. You know, they won a playoff series. They beat the team that's got their old pitcher on it. Kind of like how the Lions took care of the team that had their old quarterback on it in the playoffs. You got to love it. And I mean, Tigers World Series, Lions Super Bowl this year. I mean, shoot, Kyle, we're about to eat real good. Yeah, I got to crack a open a, if that happens. Yeah, crack open a cold one. Time to celebrate. Yeah, there you go. Hey, do what you got to do. Uh, it's a good time right now to be a sports fan in the state of Michigan. Unless you're a Michigan uh, fan, then <laughs> they'll get it together. Don't worry about it. If you say uh, so, bud. Yep. Let's move on here before I get too upset. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> okay. Hello, everyone, and welcome to episode 40 of Just Line Around, Detroit Lions podcast presented by the World of Football. I'm your host, Kyle Sutherland, and I'm joined by my co-host and brother-in-law, Adam Snow. So, um, Adam, I know we got that uh, Monday night game. You probably stayed up for the whole game. About four or five hours of sleep the next day, going to work. Were you tired? Yeah. Or are you feel I energized? I, it, I it's funny because my girlfriend stayed up with me, watched the whole game, and we were texting that next morning, and she's like, "I am tired because we didn't go to bed till like midnight. Game got done about eleven thirty. We couldn't go to sleep till about midnight. I still got up at five in the morning. She didn't have to roll out of bed till about six, but she was like, "I am just tired at work." And I'm like, "I feel great. I was <laughs> wired." I was just like, I didn't need an energy drink. I don't need, I don't even drink coffee or any of that in the morning anyway. And I was just like running on adrenaline and just running on the fumes, the the mousse bouche, the appetizer, the whole dang meal. I, I was just living off of that Lions victory that uh, that morning. I know we're a day late. I mean, we should have talked about it yesterday. But, you know, well, the football schedule has been busy. You had your Tigers baseball the last couple of days. So we found time to fit this in this week. Oh, yeah. So yeah, good game uh, Monday night. I was stayed up. I um, actually stayed up for the whole game, uh, which thank God I did because it was a uh, really fun game to watch here. But um, on today's show, we're gonna go over the Lions' Week Four win against the Seattle Seahawks and the referees, and then talk some news and what might happen during the bye week. Um, so we had the Lions forty-two, Seahawks twenty-nine. Overall, Lions dominated this game. Seahawks looked like they might have um, might have might been able to crawl back here, but uh, they had a few unfortunate plays go the Seahawks' way, um, which kind of sealed the deal for Detroit. Um, so let's talk about uh, stats here. 
Uh, Jared Goff throwing a perfect game, 155 uh, PFF. Uh, he went 18-18 for 292 yards, two touchdowns, uh, one reception uh, for seven yards, and one touchdown. Amon Ross St. Brown, six receptions for 45 yards and one touchdown, and he threw for one pass for seven yards and one touchdown. Jamison Williams back on the board here. He had two receptions for 80 yards and one touchdown and a beautiful dunk over the field goal post. Uh, David Montgomery, 12 carries, 40 yards, one touchdown, and one reception for 40 yards. And Jameer Gibbs, 14 carries for 78 yards and two touchdowns. Seahawks, we had Geno Smith, um, 38 of 56 for 395 yards, one touchdown, one interception, five carries for 38 yards. I know the uh, 395 yards looks, that's a lot of yards for a quarterback. But if you look at the fourth quarter, um, you kind of see like he threw a lot during that, trying to keep up or make uh, magic happen for the Seahawks there. So I wouldn't totally put um, all that on the Lions defense there. Well, um, well, we'll talk more about that here one second. We will, yeah. Kenneth Kenneth Walker the third came back doing uh, jujitsu moves out there. Twelve carries for eighty yards, three touchdowns, four receptions for thirty six yards, and DK Metcalf, a um, freak athlete out there. Seven receptions for 104 yards. Total yards, we had Lions, 389. Seahawks, 506 yards. Time of possession, Lions, 25 minutes and 56 seconds. And Seahawks, 34 minutes and 4 seconds. So let's do the offense here first. Um, I want to give props to Ben Johnson. He got a game ball. Um, excellent game plan by him. Um, especially with Goff looking perfect in the pocket. Excellent um, PFF grade there. Um, we got everyone involved, Gibbs, Monty, Aminra, Laporta, Williams, Patrick. Um, they were all involved in a running game and um, catching game. We had three touchdowns through the air and three on the ground. Um, also, um, before I let you talk here, I just want to give a shout out to uh, – Good morning football with Kyle Brandt doing his segment of Angry Runs. And uh, uh, Montgomery won his second award for the Angry Run with his wild catch plowing over Witherspoon over and uh, getting a 40-yard run out of it. So, uh, yeah, good on uh, Montgomery just looking like a tank out there. Yeah, impressive play. And for Ben Johnson, I mean, that's probably one of the more balanced games he's called in a bit. It just felt like uh, everything was in sync. You know, the running game opened up the passing game. The passing game opened up the running game. And, you know, I think they called the right plays at the right times, it felt like. There were a couple of drives a little shaky, like the the drive down by the end zone where we ended up having to give up a safety. Uh, the opening oh, drive was yeah. a little disappointing. There was just a couple of situations I wish that Ben Johnson would have capitalized on, but he did the one thing that we – we criticized a lot last year. For the first few weeks, we're still kind of concerned about was that, as you would quote it, the third quarter. They came out in the third quarter, and they just, I don't know what it was. I've never seen the Lions play like this in the third quarter in a long time. They they look like they didn't lose any momentum, at least on offense. Uh, we'll get to the defense, but, I mean, uh, where else do you want to spread some love on this offense so I don't get a little too far? Uh, let's talk about Jamison Williams. Like I mentioned before, he had a uh, good catch over the middle there by Goff, 70-yard total and for a touchdown and saluting Kelvin Johnson's famous um, dunk over the field goal post. Kelvin Johnson's done that a few times, so um, Jamison Williams did that as well because um, it was a special night, and we'll talk about that here too. You gonna bring that ref uh, back in to throw a flag on that play? Cause uh, what a what a stupid penalty for dunking on a goalpost. Get out of here, refs. Yeah. Well, I, I think uh, they don't want like um, 
it to affect the goal post because I think someone else did that before and it like twisted the goal post and screwed everything up. Suck it up. That's why you got a grounds crew. Jameson yeah. Williams is like this thin. What's he going to do? <laughs> well, he did fall, and I guess um, Amon Ra was giving him crap about it because he uh, uh, fell down. He there. deserved it. He deserved a little <laughs> bit. But, hey, all I care about is Jameson Williams having fun. This is I love seeing Jameson Williams like this. He, uh, the, the high step in 30 yards to the end zone, the dude deserves to do that when you're that wide open and when you're that stinking fast and no one's going to catch you. I love it. I also love seeing him block. He, there are so many plays that, you know, you would be like, oh, Jamison Williams is just the fast wide receiver that's going to take deep bombs, right? No, he's that dude that's also going to block you. He's not afraid to block you, and I'm loving that about him. And there's a great video of him going to a food place after the game and just, oh, yeah. you know, dude, this guy is so much fun. I, I love that he's having fun, and it's great to finally have him as, like, a super critical part of the offense now. Yeah, and not only Jamison Williams, like all these wide receivers, like oh yeah, a big uh, thing for the Detroit Lions coaching staff is if you want to play, you have to block for the running backs. So um, got Tim Patrick out there. I think his rapport with Goff is just going to get better. He's going to get more looks. But um, even on running plays, Tim Patrick was out there blocking his butt off um, for Gibbs or Montgomery. So, yeah. Um. And you can tell Goff's looking for him on that one play, the the safety we talked about. He was looking for Tim Patrick. Tim Patrick was the one that was going to be wide open. So Goff and him at least have that connection. He he relied on Patrick a couple times during that game uh, and made some really great catches. He's not the fastest guy on the field, but he made really cru- uh, crucial catches and got some critical first downs at a couple points. I thought he was outstanding, filling in that kind of that Josh Reynolds role we used to have. Uh, yeah. I'm, and Josh Reynolds is a little more speedy guy, a little little leaner, but I like how big Tim Patrick is. He seems like the kind of guy that he's going to be that dude you're going to throw it up to and he's going to catch it in traffic. So I am, I'm just down for that, and I hope he stays healthy. I'm liking seeing Tim Patrick out there. Good addition. Yeah, and they also signed uh, Allen Robinson to the active roster too. So it um, be interesting if we can see him out there in a couple uh, games here, see what he can do as well. For sure. But, uh, yeah, the only other thing about the offense here, uh, again, Jared Goff threw a perfect game. Um, but the biggest thing was um, Frank Ragnall was out in the center, so we moved Glasgow over and had Awasika as the uh, guard. So I was a little worried. Like, I knew they uh, did that before uh, last year, and they moved Awasika in last year for, like, the playoff games. So we had a little – um a little knowledge, knowledge of like what to do uh, for the game plan and stuff, but yeah, that that pocket pocket was pretty much perfect. And when that pocket is perfect for golf, like um, that just equals like a dangerous golf. Um, he's got time to throw, time to look at his um, wide receivers and make the uh, correct throw there. And then he's also got time to uh, leak out to the side and catch a amazing touchdown pass. Uh... That play, I about lost my mind. It was so good when he caught that touchdown. Uh, and speaking of the offensive line, though, yeah, I mean, I would not have guessed if Frank Ragnow was out of this game. That offensive line played just as good if he is if he was in there. So great call by the coaching staff to say, Frank, we love you. We know you probably would tough it out. But we trust some of the depth on this team to let you rest a couple weeks before that Dallas game. And I'll seek a, what a – I don't remember anybody blaming him for a sack. I don't remember anybody blaming him for, you know, any terrible blocking. So Awasika seems like he's one of the best next man up guys. I mean, obviously they still got Skipper running out there from time to time reporting eligible. But Awasika is holding his own. I think the Lions have built some pretty decent uh, lineman depth. So that's that's something you want, especially in a league all about uh, attrition. That's something that the Lions have in their back pocket just in case something happens to any of these other starters. Yeah, especially um, I know they got a bye coming up here, but um, but the way that the front line kind of held up uh, going into Dallas, I wonder if they're going to have Frank's maybe sit one more week just to make sure he's healthy and everything's uh, good to go with him. Or um, I, I mean, le- I, I mean, yeah, I, I I thought maybe we'd save this for the Dallas segment because I figured we talk about that either today or next week. But Dallas is also down a couple guys. I think isn't. Uh, 
Mika, uh, uh, Micah, uh, Micah Parsons out, and then they had a guy who's going to be on injured reserve. Um, we talked about that on the podcast the other day. So they're going to be down a couple of defenders on that. So the offensive line, I mean, it might not be a bad idea to let Frank rest if he needs it. Yeah, I know not Micah uh, Parsons. He's not on IR, but they did put the other guy on IR, so he won't be able to play. But um, I imagine uh, Parsons is going to try and play that game. Uh, well, we'll see. But, but yeah, we'll about golf too, because um, we can talk about Dallas later. But about golf, right. he did get the NFC Offensive Player of the Week award today, so that's pretty sweet. Yeah, he got that, but he didn't get a game ball. No. Yes, he did. <laughs> Campbell he gave him a game there. ball the next day. It's all good in there, man. Uh, what a good sound bite, though, from Dan Campbell. Like, oh, I love that man so much. Yeah, and Jerry Goff, I don't think he was upset with it. Like, he's got a few nah. game balls. He He's a leader on this team. Like, I, I'm pretty he sure he was just – win. Yeah, and he was probably more happy with – other players on the team getting game balls as well. And when you go home to the supermodel wife he's got, I mean, do you need a game ball? Do you, Jared? You already got everything else. Almost everything except bringing a, the Lions that Super Bowl ring. Come on, Jared. Uh, it'll happen. They. Uh, it's going to happen. Defense Tigers gets are winning a the World Series. Lions are winning the Super Bowl, baby. Let's go. It's that yeah. kind of day today, Kyle. Get hyped up. I need a little more energy from you. <laughs> Yeah. Bring that referee uh, back. He had way more energy than you got right now. Yeah. <laughs> so let's talk about defense here real quick. Oh, do we have to? Um, overall, first half, um, the defense held Seattle to seven points. A um, couple of things about that. A lot of defensive penalties, a few too many, if you ask me, by uh, being thrown by the referees for both teams, I felt. Um, especially with Davis and Arnold holding our PI calls. Uh, Carlton Davis had four, and um, going against DK Metcalf, a uh, physical receiver like that, I mean, you got to let them play. I mean, yeah. DK is going to put his hands all over Davis, so you got to let Carlton Davis put his hands on DK. As long as he gets him off when that ball is near him, he's fine. But, man, there was a lot of tick, ticky-tacky calls there. And – also, Arnold, he mostly got the holding calls. Like um, Troy Aikman, I kind of left, but in his com commentary, he said, "Man, if I were uh, Lions um, during the bye week or practice, I'd put oven mitts on Terry on Arnold and have him practice in oven mitts." Because I mean, um, yeah, going from Alabama to the NFL like that, like it's going to be a Adjustment that he's going to have to do, but, yeah, he's going to do it. And once he gets everything uh, ticking, it, he's going to be a much better player there. I think he's already improved in four weeks. Uh, I mean, yeah, the penalties suck. I also agree. Ticky tech. I, I think these referees, it, it sucks. They ruined what could have been an even more fun game uh, if they would just let these players play. Like, DK is so physical. I mean, he's going to get his. It's undeniable. Let him let him make those freakish catches. He had a couple freakish catches. The dude's incredible. Um, but you got to let the Lions match his physicality a little bit, or you're going to have to start calling DK for pushing off, which they weren't about to do, apparently. The one offensive pass interference they did call, I don't know if I agree with or not, uh, against Tyler was it Tyler Lockett. Yeah. Uh, that, that crucial fourth down play. So I – I just wish the referees would take a step back. Let these guys play a little bit. Let them get a little hands, but not enough to where, like, a couple of times I agree, like, Tyrion was just holding the guy. Tyrion pretty much tackled the guy and said, whoa, why is that flag on me? Like, come on, Tyrion. You literally just <laughs> tackled the guy to the ground when the ball wasn't near him. It's like, I can live with some of it, but there's sometimes where I'm like, that's the, the hand on the hip. It's not a, he's not moving the guy. He's not twisting the guy a whole, whole lot. He's just kind of using him as, uh, not leverage, but he's just kind of, Keeping keeping him in his vicinity, and then you know Davis or whoever is getting their hand in there and swiping the ball down. I they gotta just let him play like that. I mean, he's not really impeding the ball, getting to him. He's just getting in there. He's not twisting the body. So I, yeah, these referees gotta settle the heck down. Uh, but it, it is weird that the felt, did feel like the Lions got a few more calls than they normally would. Uh, yeah, 
But, I mean, we dealt with that on the other side. I mean, and Seattle fans can complain all they want, but I'd like to remind them, hey, remember that time where you had a guy bat the ball out of the back of the end zone and it should have been the Lions ball at the one-yard line, but you got to keep the ball and we should have won that game? Just saying. Just saying. Bad calls are going to happen. But I thought I thought the referees were just unusually ticky-tack last uh, on Monday night. But uh, Tyrion's going to learn. Four weeks in, he's going to learn. He's going to get better. I mean, it's like letting a rookie quarterback develop and grow. He's going to make his mistakes. And, but when everything starts clicking and he starts getting into a rhythm, I mean, he's going to be pretty good. And, and we've talked about it last week, and we're going to talk about it again. Now, he's had to face a gauntlet of receivers for four weeks. Like some of the best of the best. And he's it's not gonna stop anytime soon. Like every week he's gonna have the best of the best against him. So hey, he's gonna have to learn and hopefully the bye week helps. Yeah, well um I also heard like reports, like he was talking to a reporter and he's they were asking him, like, hey, um, what's different from the NFL versus college? And he's I guess Terry on Arnold said that in college, um they were kind the quarterbacks were kind of lofting the ball up. Um, giving Terry on Arnold to turn around and make make a play on the ball instead of um, holding or whatever, but in the NFL, like quarterbacks are like throwing rockets, like really fast balls to the receivers. So um, it's he just has to get his timing down right. Yeah, yeah. That's so uh, yep. So let's talk about the second half here. Um, it looked pretty bad on the. Uh, um, watching the game for the defense, um, a lot of Geno Smith completions. Uh, but one thing I want to point out is the Lion offense, even though they're scoring points left and right, um, a lot of people felt that, you know, maybe they were going a little too quick. Um, we had that um, one pass to Jamison Williams for 70 yards. Uh, that I mean, that literally lasted like, what, 10 seconds, and then the uh, they had to kick it off again. Yeah, so yeah, that up by fourteen or fifteen at that point. So yeah, which is good, but yeah, that defense didn't have any time to rest or anything. So they had to true. hop right out there and try to get another stop there. Especially after the Seattle. I mean, so the first half, obviously, the Lions' running game did very well. I mean, yeah, I th- what they held them to eighteen yards rushing, something crazy like that in the first half. Kenneth Walker couldn't get nothing going. I I don't know if they just if the Seahawks' game plan had to shift or if they just immediately abandon the, the ground game altogether to start the game. But whatever clicked in the second half, I don't know if the Lions just didn't adjust something because they had, like, so many weird blown coverages or just really bad uh, assignments because you had, like, Anzalone out wide on either Charbonnet or Kenneth Walker if they, would like, put him out wide. It just created a lot of mismatches that went in the Seahawks' favor. I wasn't a big fan of that Lions defense. Just like, why don't you just throw one more corner out there? Like, I get, you, you know. Uh, well, I, I mean, just, you want I, a I linebacker. Wish they one more. But a linebacker it, out there covering a, a running back that's also could, like, double as a wide receiver. Like, well, you say, put, put a, a linebacker uh, on Jameer uh, Gibbs. Good luck with that. Well, you put a, a defensive back on Jameer Gibbs. Good luck with that, too. I'd rather have a. Well, that, linebacker that's built bigger trying to stop a running back man you're just asking a fat kid to chase after an ice cream truck at that (laughs) point i just i don't know i want my speedy guy i don't want a linebacker running a you know running up against the speedy dude like a charbonnet or a walker or gibbs like so okay so we take um what rodriguez he's a third um linebacker out who are you gonna put in um Cornerback, who are you gonna put in for that? You got Vildor, you got Rake Straw, you got uh oh. another guy whose name I can't remember on the different you just one more Vildor was out there quite a bit. I don't remember Vildor getting burned on anything, but you put Vildor out there in a couple packages. Oh. I mean, I don't know. It's just something different. You can't keep putting Anzalone or a Rodrigo out on a on a running back out wide. It just don't work. It did. Well, work. I mean, you're talking about a crazy specimen and our um, uh, Kenneth Walker, though. It's like he He's did that. Beast. Anzalone had him to the ground. He had him, but Kenneth Walker did that backflip, front flip over Anzalone, which I think everyone that's going to be a highlight no matter what. Like, oh, yeah. That's, it was that's uh, gonna crazy live to see there. Yeah. Live forever. 
I mean, if that was any regular uh, running back, it would have been it would have been um, a tackle there. Yeah. So I, I don't know. It's just that Seattle offense is just crazy loaded, especially when you got uh, Kenneth Walker back from injury. Like yeah. they are very dangerous on that offensive side there. Yeah, they they got a good squad. They have a great offense, and you know it's it. It's going to be tough to stop him from scoring points and moving the ball up and down the field. Geno Smith, I don't think gets enough credit. I think Geno is a very adequate quarterback, especially in that system and that and with that team. He's got a really good ball. And you were mentioned earlier about him, you know, padding his. I won't say you said padding his stats, but you essentially alluded to the fact that they were down was why he was chucking the ball further down the field or trying to you know throw the ball more, which might be the case a little bit. But I just also think that that the Lions defense got gassed. Like you'd see, yeah, you also yeah, mentioned, yeah. The, the Lions only had 25 minutes of possession this game. The Lions scored quick. They scored 42 points off of, I can't even tell you, it was a very low amount of plays that our offense actually ran, and they still had 42 points. Unbelievable. But then that, uh, the flip side of that coin is, that means so if you're less on, on the field, yeah, you got those points, but that means your defense is on the field getting gashed and giving up points. Luckily, though, Kirby Joseph getting the interception in the end zone Big and crucial. The early fumble was a big momentum sw- uh, swing for the Lions, and essentially that 14 point lead there that they started the game with was pretty much the key for the rest of the game. And the Lions maintained that lead; they never gave up the lead at all during the game. They held on to that lead, which is what you want your team to do. What what good teams do? This defense has just got to clean it up because in the second half they they just Seahawks ran all over them. They got to fix that. Yep. So yeah. Um, let's talk about a few notes uh, from this game. Uh, Brian Branch was a late inactive due to illness. Um, if he did end up playing, I think it would have been a different outcome. I think it the uh, I think it might have caused the Seattle to maybe score uh, like one less touchdown if Brian Branch is out there because uh, he's a good in the box safety. He can go out in the back with uh, Kirby Joseph. Um, he's great at deflecting balls. Um, so yeah, if, if Brian Branch was out there, I think we would have been talking like a different total defensive side of that game. Yeah. I mean, um, I mi- I missed him out there. Sorry not to cut you off, but I missed him out there a little bit, but I thought the defense, even without him, I don't know how much of a difference that would have made. I mean, he probably would have made a couple of those tackles cause it felt like the lions couldn't tackle at a couple points, but and especially down in the red zone situation, you know, I think they broke a lot of contain. Uh, I feel like they probably would have been a little bit tighter back there had a player like Branch been on the field with them. Yeah, and they had uh, Brandon Joseph as the other safety out there. Um, overall, he did pretty good. He had a five tackles total, one assist. So um, they do have depth at that safety. But, yeah, it would have been a lot better if Brian Branch was out there. For sure. All right. And then, uh, yeah, we already talked about it. Too many penalties called for both teams in this game. 21 total. Detroit had 12 penalties for 101 yards, uh, 15 flags, and Seattle, nine penalties for 70 yards and 10 flags. So, yeah, I don't know if – because you watch any game, it's just the referees are just going crazy with these penalties. So I don't know – if Roger Goodell is going to send out a memo or something, but yeah, something's got to happen because you got to, you got to let these players play the game. I so, I feel like it's something we complain about every year and it's still early enough in the season where I feel like we complain about all this stuff and maybe eventually it slowly kind of works itself out as the season progresses. Uh, I don't know what will happen. We'll find out. I mean, the chiefs will still probably get some flags. That's just kind of par for the course, but I don't We'll We'll have to wait and see. That game in Dallas will be very telling. We'll, we'll see what kind of mood those referees are in that day, depending on who reports eligible, who doesn't. You know, so we'll find out. <laughs> yeah. Um, another thing, uh, Lions did to wear their all black uniforms. He also had a blackout, um, black lining on the f- um, field there, around the field. Um, so yeah, overall that atmosphere there looked pretty cool, but. The only gripe I'm going to say about those black uniforms, even though I do love them, um, it's hard to see their names and numbers. So um, hopefully next year they kind of tweak it a little bit to see those numbers and names a little bit. 
I don't think they will, but I didn't hate the uniforms as much as I initially did when they released them. Look, they, I thought the numbers looked sharp on camera. I think it just depends on the angle and the lighting, like uh, during a night game. The helmet, though, I like the helmet up close. Yeah. But but far away, I was like, I can't even tell. Like, at least with a Lions typical helmet, like that one, I could tell that that's a Lion on the side of the helmet. With the blue and then the darker logo, I couldn't make out what was on their helmet. It just looked like a blue shell. And I just don't think that's a great uh, look for that jersey. But, I mean, if you want to pair that blue helmet with, like, a blue Lions jersey, maybe, and tweak the stripes, probably got a winner there. But give me give me the classic all the live long day. We only got to deal with these alternates a couple times. Give me the blues, the blueberries, the marshmallow uniforms, whatever you want to call them. Give me all those. I'm I'm fine with the classics. Yep. So um, let's talk about the bye week here, and I want to talk about one player. Um, he did play during this game, James Houston. Um, he made like he was on the field for maybe twelve to fourteen plays. He had two penalties called on him because he jumped too early. Um, but yeah, overall he was in there for pass rushing uh, plays. Uh, he didn't do a lot. He didn't do anything at all, in fact. So, um, talk going around. Maybe uh, maybe it's time to let him go because they asked Campbell a few times in the interviews and it seemed like Campbell was kind of not confident in Houston. I don't know if Houston, after his two injuries, uh, breaking the bone and the uh, ankle injury, if he's just not the same or what. But, yeah. I would be surprised if either by the trade deadline, deadline he gets traded or maybe gets cut. So I don't know what we'll to see on him, but I don't I mean, think they, he's the answer we we uh, need for the opposite side of Hutchinson. I think they need to stick with Pascal. Hopefully Barnes gets healthy quick and gets back out there. But yeah, I don't, I don't think Houston's going to make it much longer here. Trade him for Max Crosby, baby. Let's do it. Trade him for Max Crosby. Well, yeah, you got Devontae Adams already wanting to leave, so it might be a uh, fire sale. Fire at the sale. Raiders. Yeah. Like, yeah, if Crosby does come out and say, I want to be traded, like if I was um, the GM for Detroit, um, what's his name? Brad Holmes, man. Good Brad Lord. Holmes, man. <laughs> Don't you have a painting of him up in your office yet? Like I got my uh, painting right here, Brad Holmes. I got, I got it my ordered. camera, but it's an expensive painting. <laughs> but yeah, if I was Brad Holmes, I'd be selling maybe a second round pick or whatever for Max Crosby. Do whatever you can to get him. Yeah, I think it's time. I mean, you gotta pair somebody up with Hutch. Could you imagine a beast like that? But I mean, he probably won't. That's not usually his MO. He's not really a big splash trade guy. So we could we could dream, but I don't know. We'll see if, what they do. But Houston, I think it's time to move on. If he was any sort of good or any sort of like awesome that he was when he first came to Detroit, and that half that second half of the season when he was just playing lights out, getting eight sacks, whatever it was he had, that that guy's not the same player. And I don't know why they're hanging on to him unless they think he can still do that. But I don't know. It looks like confidence is waning. I think it's just time to move on and open up a roster spot for somebody else. Yeah, especially with um, Iffy, not Iffy, but the other cornerback who got hurt. Sounds like he might come back or or in time for the season. And then uh, you got Kaminsky who might come back too. So they have to open up spots. So, um, yeah, it's, it's not looking good for a few players on this team. Yeah, well, it's the nature of the biz. Uh, but yeah, let's, um, talk yeah, about gonna, some news, news I here. Say, I see you got news next. Uh, so how do we want to do this? Do we want to save, uh, are we going to do an episode during the bye week and then preview the Cowboys game? We can do another episode. We'll talk about the Cowboys primarily, but yeah, I want to talk about, okay. um, talk about, yeah, we'll save one of these for the, um, buy, buy episode. Okay. But, yeah, I just want to talk about this other thing. Governor Whitmore uh, declared September 30th as Megatron Day in honor of Kelvin Johnson. Um, Kelvin Johnson got inducted. Um, looked pretty cool. Uh, 
Lions came out with a video showing all that. So, um, yeah, congrats to Calvin Johnson. The only thing is they did not air it on TV, and I don't understand why they did not do that. That was a bummer. I was really bummed about that. You put him in the pride of the Lions on Monday Night Football, and they don't show any footage of it at all during the game. Shame on you, ESPN and ABC, for that. You made everybody else have to sit through that crappy first game between the Dolphins and Titans, and then they get a gem of a game in the Lions-Seahawks, and what do you do at halftime? You don't reward them by showing them the greatest wide receiver to ever play the game, get inducted into the Lions' pride of honor. No, you showed a bunch of Chick-fil-A commercials and a bunch of dudes in the studio. Bad on you, ESPN. Give us the Calvin Johnson. That's what we wanted. Yeah. Land over. So, yeah, they, they really missed the mark on that. And I think a they lot did. of people complaining about that, too. So, yeah, if you're watching this, just Google it, Detroit Lions, um, on YouTube or yeah. whatever social media. They'll have you that video out it. there. Yep. yep. And then, um, yeah, so we'll talk about um, next episode. Uh, coming out next week, we'll talk about um, the record heading into the Cowboys game and how – the revenge, revenge tour is going to continue with beating the Cowboys. So, yeah, be on the lookout for that. And we'll also talk about a couple players. Hopefully they're healthy by then getting back on the team because um, we could sure use their uh, talent out there to help relieve some of the um, pressure off of other guys there. Heck yeah, looking forward to it. All right. Anything else you want to add? Um, I think I'll be good. Um, I'm looking forward to talking about our over-under prediction for how many times the Lions are going to send somebody as an eligible receiver during this game. Uh, that should be a lot of fun. I think Take a drink every time somebody reports eligible, Kyle. <laughs> they'll do it. They'll do it, but uh, it'll be a big, um, like it'll be a, like, um, the over-exaggerate it, like, do you do it the first field. play of the game to kind of get Dallas to be like, all right, they they did the thing. We can all play the game. Now, then they really pull it off at the end of the game again, and they fight them in the butt with it. That's yeah, that instead of um, Decker, it'll be Sewell catching the, the ball in the end zone. Oh, man, you know, oh, boy, did it just get hot in here? Oh, my God. <laughs> that's that's what I want. Oh, that's what I want, Kyle. Oh, all right, well, even, this. Yep. All right, so let's go ahead and close it out. All right. Um, we hope you enjoyed listening to today's episode and come back for more. Uh, be sure to visit the World of Football's website, www.theworldoffootball.com, for news links, upcoming events, original articles, videos, and more. If you want to get in touch with us, send us an email at info at theworldoffootball.com, or you can connect with us by either liking the World of Football on Facebook, uh, X, or Instagram. The account for all those is at TWF Kalamazoo. Uh, Be sure to check out our flagship podcast this week in the world of football, which drops new episodes every Tuesday uh, during the year. Um, So that's also available in the same podcast feed you found this podcast or over on the YouTube channel. Again, uh, links will be down in the description below. And you can find Kyle working at your local Foot Locker Monday, Tuesdays, Thursdays, and Fridays. Uh, from about 4 p.m. to about 10 o'clock, uh, he will be there with a the little foot measuring thing. He'll get you all set up, and he takes real good care. He's really gentle on the feet, everybody, just so you know, when he's helping you put yeah. the sneakers on. Yeah, I don't know what you're talking about. Like, um, some guy was running out of my house as I was coming up here named Timmy, saying maybe look out for another episode here. So, yeah, I guess, yeah. Be on the lookout for another episode, whatever he does. But, yeah, that's it for us this week. Um, Hope you enjoyed the episode. And uh, be on the lookout for another episode next week, talking about the bye and looking ahead at the Cowboys game. And, um, yeah, enjoy your week off football. Bring back Timmy. Bring (laughs) back Timmy. Bring back Timmy. Uh, I applaud you for uh, wanting to start a reoccurring character on this podcast. I'm just yeah, let's it's see. Good to, good to see you uh, with some initiative over there, Kyle. Like I, I said, that. I don't know what you're talking about. I'm not Timmy, so I don't know what you're talking about. So yeah, hopefully you enjoy your weekend off. Tigers are playing next week as well. 
um, against the Guardians. Guardians, all right. They're going down too. Well, uh, hopefully, but Guardians is a deadly team. We'll see. <laughs> yeah, Tigers are a team of destiny. Yeah. Them and the Lions, baby. Super Bowl World Series. Let's go. All right. Until then, we'll talk to you guys later. Go Lions. Go Lions and Tigers. And Tigers, yep. <laughs>